The flower shop block of the month, May flowers. How to sew the floral display. This is part of the flower shop block of the month, which is a series of 12 panels with instructions. Cutting out. Take the fabric panel and give it a press. You will see that all the pieces are labelled. Cut off the labels and pin them to the top of this relevant fabric piece so that you remember which is which. You have a flower arrangement and in an informal flower, the outer borders, all the binding strips. Cut the fabric panel you want to use the, to the centre and then cut out all the flower petal prints and pin the label to the top of them so you remember which is which. Then cut out all the background fabric squares. The measurements for these are listed in the instructions. Making a flower block. Take eight of the flower background fabric squares and on the wrong side of one of them, draw a diagonal line running from one corner to the opposite corner. I've used an erasable pen for this. Repeat that with the other seven squares. Now take one of the flower petal print one squares and place and pin one of the drawn flower background fabric squares right for sides facing in the top left corner, matching the side and top raw edges. So the diagonal lines runs from top right to bottom left, pin into place. Now sew together along that drawn line. Remove the pins and fold the corner so it meets with the top left corner and press. Open it up and trim off the seam allowance so it's about a quarter of an inch wide. Now press that corner back into place. Take another drawn flower background fabric square and place it right sides facing on top in the top right corner matching the top and side edges so the diagonal line runs from top left to bottom right then pin into place it will overlap the first flower background fabric square that's already sewn on sew together along the drawn diagonal line remove the pins Fold the corner over so it meets with the top right hand corner and press. Open it up and trim the seam allowance in the same way as you did before. Then press that corner back into place. Repeat this process to pin and stitch two flower background fabric squares to three more flower petal print one squares. You've now made one flower petal. Place all four flower petals right sides up in the arrangement shown. Pin the two flower petals in the top row together. And so, then pin the two flower petals in the bottom row together. Now sew together down these seams. Open up the seam on the top row and press it to one side. Now open up the seam in the bottom row and press it to one side, but in the opposite direction this time. Turn them over to the right side. Now sew the top row to the bottom row, matching that centre seam. But because you press them in opposite directions, those seams will nest neatly if you pull them very gently together so that the seam matches. Pin them together at the centre seam. Then pin at one side and pin together at the other side. So all the raw edges match and the seam is matching in the middle. Sew together along this side. 
Once that's done, open it up and press the seam open. So that it's lying nice and flat. You've now completed one flower block. Give it a press so that it's all nice and flat. Now repeat this process to make three more flower petal print one flower box, four flower petal print two flower box, four petal print three flower box and four petal print four flower box in total. Adding the flower centres. Press Bondaweb with the paper side up onto the wrong side of the flower centres. Now cut one flower centre off the end and cut all the way around the outer circle. Make sure you cut carefully so that it retains its neat circular shape. Take one of your flower blocks, remove the paper from the back of the bonder web by scratching it with a pin in a cross. This makes it easier to take it off. Now take one flower block and place it, the flower center in the center and press it into place. Stitch the flower center into place to secure either by machine using a top stitch or decorative stitch like I've done using a blanket stitch or you can use a running stitch by hand. Now repeat this process to attach the flower centers to all 16 flower blocks you made in the last step. Attaching the flower border. Place the center panel, this is the flower arrangement you trimmed earlier, right side up and place the 16 flower blocks right sides around it making sure you alternate the prints. You'll have three in the top and bottom rows and five in the side rows. Join the three blocks in the top row together, right sides facing. Then sew the three in the bottom row together, right sides facing. Once this is done, and press the seams open. Pin this to the top of the center panel matching the side and top raw edges. Pin it in place at either end to start with so you know it's in the right place and then pin it together in the centre. Take the bottom row and place this right sides facing along the bottom edge of the centre panel again matching side and raw edges. Pin together at each end and then sew together. Once this is done, you can join the right side row, right sides facing to the side of the centre panel. Pin it together so that you make sure to start with that you match those side seams where the top border is joined on, then you'll get a neater finish and then go to the other seam so that those seams of the flower blocks are matching up exactly. Now sew that in place. Then take the left side border, place it right sides facing along the left side of the center panel and sew it in place. Press all the seams open so it's nice and flat and then you have completed adding the centre and the flower borders. Adding the outer border. Take the top outer border and place it right sides facing along the top edge of the joined flower blocks. Turn it over so that the flower blocks are on the top and pin into place. You always have the piece on top with the most seams because it's easier to keep them laying flat and open while you're stitching on top of them because you can see where your machine foot is going. Pin it together at either end making sure you match the raw edges on the side and the top. Once you've pinned it together at either end give it a little pull so it's nice and even 
and then pin it together in the centre. Again, make sure the raw edges are matching. Now you can sew together across that top edge. Take the bottom outer border and place that right sides facing with the bottom edge of the flower blocks. Again, turn it over and pin it in place so the flower blocks with all the seams are on top. You could remove the labels from the outer borders before you stitch so that you don't get them caught in the seams. Stitch it into place all the way along. Once you've attached the top border and the bottom border, press the seams open. Take one side outer border and place this right sides facing along the side right side edge of the flower blocks. And so pin, then sew into place. Take the other side outer border and place this right sides facing along the left side edge. Pin and sew into place again with the flower blocks on top. You've now added the outer borders. Press the seams open and flat to finish this section. Working the quilting. Take your backing fabric and place it right sides down. Now take your wadding and place it centrally on top. Smooth it out so that the wadding is lying nice and flat with the backing fabric. Now take your pieced floor display and place it right sides up centrally on top. The wadding and backing fabric is bigger so that you can place it centrally and trim it afterwards. Now pin, tack or spray base the layers together, whichever method you prefer. Then you can hand or machine the quilt layers together as you wish. I've quilted around the flowers and around the jug and also work some green top stitching on the stems to decorate. Once you've finished all of your quilting, trim the backing fabric and wadding off so that they are level with the raw fabric edges of the outer border. You can use a rotary cutter for this or a pair of scissors. Once you've trimmed it all the way around the edge, it's nice and neat and it's ready for the next stage. Binding the edge. Take the two binding strips and we need to join them together to make one long strip. So place one binding strip right sides together at right angles with the other binding strip. Mark where the point cross meets at the bottom edge. And then take a ruler and draw a diagonal line from this point to the top left hand corner. This will be your sewing line. Now pin the binding strips together either side of the sewing line. Place them far enough away so that you don't have to remove the pins while you're stitching and everything will stay straight. Now sew together along that line. Once that's done, remove the pins and trim the seam allowance to about a quarter of an inch to the right hand side of the sewn line. Open out the two binding strips. Then open out the seam allowance. You can do this with your fingers first. And then press that seam allowance open so it's nice and flat. And you've got a diagonal seam joining the two binding strips, which reduces bulk when you're binding the hanging later. Now take your finished hanging and fold it in half on the right side edge so you find the centre. It's best to start in the centre of one of the edges. I usually like to start on the side. Now take your joined binding strip and place it right sides together along the edge, about three inches, so the top edge is about three inches from that central pin. Now pin it into place all the way down that side edge, making sure that the raw edge of the binding strip matches up with the raw edge of the quilted top. Now 
Now, take your tape measure and measure and mark a quarter of an inch up from the bottom of the quilted hanging onto the binding strip. This is so that we can create neat mitred corners. Then pin it into place. Now sew it into place starting from that pin all the way down to the bottom and then stitch a diagonal seam from that quarter of an inch mark into the corner, just like this. Now take your quilted hanging and the binding strip and fold the binding strip upwards so that it is parallel with the side edge and pin. Now fold it back down again so that that fold is lying right on the top edge. Pin it into place, making sure those raw side edges match up. You can then remove that bottom pin, that was just to hold it in place, and put it back on top. It will hold it all still. Now sew it together, starting right from the top and sewing all the way down to the bottom edge. Make sure you pin it in place and make sure all the raw edges are matching. Again, mark quarter of an inch up from the top and stitch a diagonal seam. When you've done that, you can mitre the next corner in exactly the same way by folding the binding strip upwards so that it's parallel and then folding it back down again, just like we did before, so that the folded edge lies right at the top. Pin it into place, making sure the raw edges are matching. You can remove that bottom pin and put it on top and stitch from the top all the way down to the bottom. When you get to the bottom edge, you'll mitre the corner in exactly the same way by stopping quarter of an inch and working a diagonal seam. Continue to do all four corners in the same way, but stopping stitching about four or five inches from where you started. Now mark a centre point between this starting and stopping point. Fold the beginning edge of the binding strip over and just mark where it reaches that pin you've placed in the quilt and draw a straight line at this mark on the binding strip and cut along the straight line. Now fold that one out of the way, place the left side of the binding strip and mark where it meets that pin that's on the quilted outer border. Now you need to trim this to the same width as the binding strip. The easiest way to do this is to take the other end of the binding strip and just mark it so that it's exactly the same width. This is going to be your overlap. Draw a straight line on this second mark, not the first one you made, but the second one for the overlap and cut along this line. We're going to join the binding strip together diagonally because you'll get a neater finish. Now place the two ends right sides facing at right angles. You'll have to pull it slightly and bend the wall hanging to do this. Mark where the corner meets and then take a ruler and draw a diagonal line from that mark to the bottom left corner. Now place the two ends back together again so that they're at right angles and pin them together. If you pin just above the drawn line and just below the draw line, you can keep these pins in place while you're stitching. Now stitch together along that drawn line. Once this is done, remove the pins. And in the same way as we did before when we joined the binding strips, trim the seam allowance to a quarter of an inch outside of the drawn line. Press this diagonal seam open by opening it first with your fingers and then giving it a press. This will help it to lie nice and flat. Now you can see the binding fits perfectly all the way along. So just pin it back into place, matching the raw edges. And when you sew it into place, make sure that seam allowance stays open and flat to reduce bulk. 
Now sew it into place from one end to the other, overlapping the previously worked stitches so it's nice and secure. Once that's done, press the binding to the outside. So the seams will be facing towards the outside. When you get to the corner, you'll see that you've got a really nice neat mitre, which is that diagonal folded line. So press the binding open away from the quilt all the way round. Once you've pressed it open all the way round, turn it over to the wrong side. Now found, fold the other raw long, long edge over by a quarter of an inch so it meets up with the edge of the trimmed quilt, quilted edge. And repeat that to fold and press the other raw long edge just so it meets up with the edge of the quilted edge. Now fold that edge turned under edge over and pin it into place. Because you've already folded it under it makes it a lot easier and now you're encasing all the raw edges really neatly. So just pin it into place all the way round. I like to pin either side of the corner before I pin the corner itself. It just helps to keep everything in place. When you get to the corner, all you have to do is fold it upwards and then fold it downwards and you will automatically get a nice diagonal edge with a nice diagonal mitered edge on the front as well. Repeat that all the way around the edge. Once this is done, you can sew it into place I prefer to slip stitch in place by hand. It's just a bit neater. So just work small stitches by putting the needle through the backing fabric and making a tiny stitch into the binding. A tiny sort of vertical stitch. Make sure that none of your stitches come through to the front and you only work through the backing fabric. So again, a long stitch under the backing fabric through to the binding and a tiny stitch and back in again. When you reach the corners, in order to keep them in place, it's best to work a little stitch just through the binding fabric, making sure it doesn't come through to the front, just up to the corner, and then turn it around and work back again. Back to the other corner, making sure again that none of your stitches come through to the front. It's worth checking every now and then to make sure they haven't. Now, continue slip stitching the binding into place all the way around the edge of the quilt in exactly the same way. Once this is done, you've finished. You have got really nice, neat bound edge. Give it a press to remove the pin marks and your floral display is done. <laughs>